Inland waters are important. Lakes, reservoirs, rivers, and streams are critical parts of the oxygen budget on Earth. Not surprisingly, human activities have disrupted the processes by which oxygen is retained in inland waters. The collective effects of more than 8 billion people are tremendous. From phys.org on April 4, 2025, comes an article titled, Oxygen is running low in inland waters, and human activities are to blame. Here's the lead, plus five additional sentences to complete the first paragraph. Quote, Rivers, streams, lakes, and reservoirs aren't just scenic parts of our landscape. They're also vital engines for life on Earth. These inland waters breathe oxygen just like we do. But a new study led by Utrecht University researchers shows that we've been suffocating them during the last century, an era also known as the Anthropocene. The research published today in Science Advances reveals that the way oxygen is produced and used in inland waters has dramatically changed since 1900. The culprit? Human activities. End quote. The magnitude of the crisis is revealed in the following paragraph. Quote, oxygen, the most critical resource for life on Earth, plays an important role in other nutrient cycles, such as carbon and nitrogen. Oxygen depletion in water, called hypoxia, is causing problems. They are piling up in various coastal and freshwater systems. The result? Dying fish, disrupted food webs, poor water quality, and more, which are already affecting freshwater ecosystems across the globe. This study shows it's not just a local problem, it's a planetary one. End quote. In other words, we have yet another planetary disaster created by the mass of humans. More than 8 billion humans chasing more, more, and more on a finite planet has disrupted Earth's oxygen cycle. As I pointed out via blog post on May 28, 2009, quote, If you think the economy is more important than the environment, try holding your breath while counting your money. End quote. Three minutes into this activity, give or take a minute, air becomes limiting to your continued existence. The bottom line comes in the final two paragraphs of the phys.org article. Quote, this study showed that the modern oxygen cycle in inland waters looks nothing as it did in the early 1900s, end quote. One of the authors of the attendant peer-reviewed papers quoted, quote, Even though these waters cover just a tiny fraction of Earth's surface, they now remove nearly 1 billion metric tons of oxygen from the atmosphere each year, overall half of what the entire ocean emits back, end quote. The lead author of the peer-reviewed paper is then quoted, quote, We can't ignore inland waters and global climate and oxygen budgets anymore. They're changing faster than we thought, and they're crucial pieces of the Earth's system puzzle. End quote. The peer-reviewed open-access paper was published in the renowned Science series. Published on April 4th, 2026 in Science Advances, the paper is titled, Global Inland Water Oxygen Cycle Has Changes in the Anthropocene. Created by eight scholars, the abstract provides an excellent overview of the research and its findings. Quote, Inland waters are an important resource, a highly diverse habitat, and a key component of global biogeochemical cycles. Oxygen plays a major role in inland water ecosystem functioning, but long-term changes in its cycling remain unknown. Here we quantify global inland water oxygen production, consumption, and exchange with the atmosphere during 1900 to 2010 using a spatially explicit, mass-balanced, mechanistic model that takes into account changes in climate, hydrology, human activities, and the coupled biogeochemical dynamics. Biogeochemical refers to oxygen, nutrient, organic matter. The model shows that global inland water oxygen turnover increased during 1900 to 2010, production from 0.16 to 0.94 petagrams per year, and consumption from 0.44 to 1.47 petagrams per year. Inland waters overall remained heterotrophic and a sink of atmospheric oxygen. Direct human perturbations, changes in hydrology and nutrient supply, were more important in increasing water turnover than indirect effects via warming, end quote. As I have pointed out previously in this space, a petagram is equal to one gigaton, or 10 to the 15th grams. 
The numbers mentioned in the abstract represent huge changes in oxygen turnover. That final sentence is a surprise, at least to me. Quote, direct human perturbations, changes in hydrology and nutrient supply, were more important in increasing oxygen turnover than in indirect effects via warming. End quote. We are warming the planet at a rate unprecedented in planetary history, yet, quote, Direct human perturbations were more important in increasing oxygen turnover than indirect effects via warming. End quote. The collective power of more than 8 billion humans is on display yet again. And, yet again, we are using our power unwisely. When will it end? With us, I suppose.